what's going on boys? We're back with another vlog today. Uh, got a sick one actually. We're on our way to photograph a, what I believe is about a thousand horsepower uh, R34 GTR. And yeah, so let's get going. Alright, so here's uh, Ethan's R34, pretty fucking wicked. So he's just telling me, oh, what was the, you want to talk about the motor again? Uh, what do you want to know? It's an M1 block, um, HKS 2.8 stroker, with a bit of head work, all done by a guy down in Nelson, apparently. So I've got that sent down there and they've done it all. Um, so it's got big uh, Tomo cams, Tomo valve springs, Tomo oversized valves, guides, you fucking name it. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, so it's stroke to 2.8, um, it's got all the... So it's got precision turbo, yeah, all that. exhaust manifold, turbo smart wastegates, plasma intake manifold, um, 1650cc injectors, plasma intercooler and the clamps and all that. The um, box is brand new at the time too, and it's got, so it's just a get at the moment. Uh, it's got triple plate clutch, carbon drive shaft, there's no diffs front and rear. Fuck yeah, and it's um, making it, 600 kilowatt? The last one's dying about 600 kilowatt. Fuck yeah, work it. For now. Sick, and you say you're planning to do uh, 750 kilowatt? Roughly somewhere in there, hopefully. Yeah. So, so just bigger turbo, because yeah. you got all the supporting I've stuff. Got a much bigger turbo for it and the sequential. Yeah. So, yeah. bang those in and go take it down the corner. Oh, sequential, now. sick, fuck yeah. Fuck it. Alright, so we're just going to shoot this over here, and then we're going to go up into the hills around here and get some rollers. Oh, yeah, maybe come over a bit so you can't see the line. Keep going. Keep going. A bit more. Yeah, that's good. Cool, so we're getting ready to do the rollers now. Just gonna chuck on the 24 1.4 lens. This is the, we're just doing the front of the car mostly, 2.8 aperture. Should be sweet. Make sure the polarizer is in the right position. That's good. So as you can see, safety first, you gotta be all harnessed in when you do this this kind of stuff. And we're shooting at 1 25th of a second, which is what I usually shoot at for rollers. Sweet, so we just finished up um, shooting that, the rollers for that. It was fucking crazy as you would have seen on the GoPro. Um, amazing car, as he left I didn't capture it but he just fucking shot some huge flames. Um, so shout out to Ethan for coming out for the shoot. His Instagram, uh, he actually owns like a GTR, like they mostly do GTR modification shops so if you need to forge your RB or anything to do with RBs or GTRs, he's your man. So his Instagram, his shop is high power performance. I'll put his Instagram here or I'll put it, I would have already put it um, when I met him at the start of the video. But yeah, sick shoot. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you guys how I edit those photos. So let's jump back home and we'll get into Lightroom. Yo, so we're back home, 
ready to get these photos into Lightroom and I will show you my process. Usually how I do it is I get one sort of color scheme for one photo and then I sync those colors over to the whole set and so it gets sort of like one vibe. Um, I don't really know what that vibe is when I'm shooting the car. Most of the time, sometimes I do. Sometimes I know that it's going to be a very orange um, sort of color palette or a very summery look or a very cold, harsh look, uh, very dark, moody or bright and sometimes I go overexpose on purpose um, look. I think this time it'll be a very sort of soft, low contrast, summery, spend a good 20 minutes getting one photo perfect in terms of color balance and then syncing those settings over to all of my flagged photos and yeah so I'll show you guys that whole process from the start I'll chuck the uh, computer up on the screen now once I built my photos into Lightroom they're all imported I go through and I find sort of the top you know 20 or 30 from that set uh, usually for a car photo shoot I charge for about 20 edited photos uh, and I find that over two locations plus rollers that's enough to show every detail and to not be too repetitive because if you're offering like 50 photos for a photo shoot you can't one like that's going to take you hours and hours and hours and you know who's going to charge like you can't charge enough for that it's worth it and two you're just getting repetitive like you could do the same angle you know over a bunch of different locations I guess but yeah I usually offer about 20-25 photos for my clients so I'm going to go through there is 799 photos here uh, most of those are rolling shots because I was just spamming for like half an hour straight uh, but we can go through find the best ones and then I'll flag those by pressing P in Lightroom and then what I do is I filter by flagged and I just edit those ones and so it only shows the ones that I've chosen 90% um, of the rollers will be out of focus which is why you use a high speed uh, shutter and I think mine is like 7 FPS so there was yeah a good few hundred 799 photos so there's probably 500 of other rollers cool so now that I've flagged all of those um, there's actually about 45 there but some of them are double polarized shots <clears throat> I'll show you really quick I believe I've explained it before but basically a double polarized shot is for example this one here so you can see so with the polarizer uh, every time you turn it 90 or 180 degrees it cuts out reflections and so but only on one side of a, of a vehicle so when you're shooting a vehicle so to do a double polarized shot means you're cutting the reflections off the roof and the sun uh, the windscreen and also the side of the car and the wheels so here we have the first shot which is cutting the glare from the windscreen and then we're going to mask that over the shot of this where it's cutting the glare from the side of the car so we don't want all these reflections in here and this reflection in the window but we might keep some of this detail um, where the sun is hitting the tires because they're black and they're quite reflective um, the polarizer completely cut it from that shot so we'll probably keep this and this from this layer and then mask over the side of the car and the window from this one so that's just um, a way to get a completely flat car cut all the reflections um, and some people think that double polarizing means having two polarizers on, but it's not. You just take a photo of one side of the car, take a photo of the polarizer cutting the other side of the car, combine them in Photoshop, and you're sorted. So yeah, we've got some great shots here. Really happy with how this set came out. Um, obviously we've got some detailed shots. Got these fucking sick Nismo rims with the Nidos on them. Uh, I absolutely love this combination and those big brimbos behind them, they just look meaty as hell. So I think these are going to come out really good. Um, what I think we're going to need to do, because the colours in this first set of stationary shots is quite different, the light's a lot higher than it is in the rolling shots, so I think I'm going to do a colour grade for the stationary shots and then probably a separate one for the rolling shots here. But Really happy about how the set came out so far. Um, obviously there's a ton of rolling shots in here, I'll probably cut some of these. And I even got a cheeky one with my feet in the shot, which I've always wanted to do. Um, but I'll probably just put that as like a banner on my personal Facebook page or something, but I've always wanted to get a shot like that. So we'll go through now and we will get started on editing this first one here. So let's bring in the highlights a bit, the shadows, the shadows a bit more actually. Bring these blacks down. 
give it a tiny bit of clarity. Bit of vibrance. I'm gonna bring the black down in the tone curve as well. And then basically with the um, with the HSL, I just slide thing around, slide things around a um, little bit until they look good. So the reds is not really much red in this image. Um, actually, as you can see, the Nismo the Nismo bolts here. Those are red, so I don't really want to fuck up the colors of them too much, so I'm just going to leave red how it was. Orange is going to really impact this foreground reflection and the background, so I'm going to leave that pretty chill and just a little bit more orange. Yellow is going to really, really affect that, so I'm going to leave that just a little bit more yellow than it was. Green, there's not a ton of green, but I'm going to mute those, make those a bit more yellow. Aqua. I usually make aqua um, just full blue because then you can change all the aquas and the blues with the blue slider. So, so red saturation, we can keep that how it is. Orange, leave it. Yellow. I don't want to just bring it down a touch because the background is super saturated how it is already. You can bring down the aqua. Definitely take pretty much, I'm going to leave a little bit of blue in there, but bring it down a fair bit. Take out the purple, take out the magenta, they're just causing some awkward like purple reflections on the ground here, and purple is just generally a pretty ugly looking colour, um, you know, unless it's like your subject, if it's just purple reflections on the ground and things like that, I think it looks very good. And I generally don't fuck with the luminance. Um, I might touch it up a bit here just to make those Nismo bolts stand out a bit more, but you know, I try not to fuck with it too much. Um, might do it a tiny bit with the orange. Cool, now onto the split toning. So, as I said in the previous video, split toning is basically where you get most of the, the vibe from your image, and obviously, a huge part of that is the light that you, you know, the time of day that you take it, um, and all that. But split toning. You can really just give a vibe to your images. It's sort of hard to explain. I'm no color expert. In fact, I only just started getting like somewhat decent at um, color balance and all that stuff. I still don't like, I, like people go really hard and they go in Photoshop and they fuck with like every single color's own tone curve and everything. I'm still learning. <laughs> you know, I'm not at that stage yet. So, uh, pretty much what I do right now is just fuck up the tone curve a little bit and then coming down to split toning and then as I've mentioned before hold alt and then check what the hue is on this and I'm thinking that I'm gonna want a bit of blue for the highlights and sort of a dark orange for the shadows so I'm gonna have this very slight blue on the highlights and then the shadows I'm gonna put a bit of orange in and that's just going to give that feeling of, I you know, it's going to, one, it's going to make the white of the car less yellow, um, because we're bringing blue into the highlights, and then with the shadows, it's going to just make it feel a bit more warm, because we're bringing orange into the shadows, and it's just got that nice sort of faded, low contrast, late sunset look to the photo. I think the balance here should be all good. Yeah, we'll just leave that how it was. The sharpening, I always usually set my photos to 100, and then bring it all the way down until it's just the lines of the car that we need. We shouldn't need to use any noise reduction on this photo because the ISO is only 400, so there's nothing for a Sony. There's, nah, there's basically no noise in there at all. Down to the shadows, let's see. Might bring a little bit of purple into the shadows here you know like I said in the last video just fuck around you know put all these sliders to the maximum and see how it affects your photo you know I've been I've been using Lightroom for six years now and when I started I just did thousands and thousands of shitty overdone HDR images like HDR used to be my shit I used to just like take like nine photos like each like two slots in between and create these super um, crazy photos that were just like fucking 
super oversaturated, you know, clarity 100, all that bullshit. So give it a bit of that blue and teal look. Cool, so I think that is gonna be my colors sorted for this image. Um, so if we use the backslash button here, you can see your before and after. So it's looking much better. So what I'm gonna do is select all the photos, click sync. I'm gonna deselect crop, spot removal, local adjustments, uh, white balance, and then you know everything that isn't universal. So you know white balance. Um, if I've done any brushing or spot removal, which I haven't yet, and then also the crop. So let's do that. Synchronize to all photos, and then I'll probably just have to change the colors slightly for the rolling shots as they were. Uh, a bit underexposed and the colors were a bit different because they were all pretty much in the shade. So now I'm going to go through and give each photo a bit of a tweak. If I feel like some areas like this, uh, this spot here, you know like for example what I might do for this image here is just bring a bit more clarity into the wheel since that's sort of the subject of the photo. So if we zoom in here, it's also a good idea to zoom in because a Lightroom is probably going to render your photos um, for speed for your computer, so they're not going to render the full detail. So as you can now, I zoom out, photos much more detailed. So I'm going to come in here and just give the wheel a bit of clarity with the brush there, just a little bit, you know, just like 20 or 30, and that just makes that a little bit sharper and just really pops. Cool. Yeah. So I'm just going to go through now, make some slight tweaks to each image, um, and just get it all fine tuned. Let's have a quick look at the rollers here actually. Yeah, these are looking really good. Really liking how these are turning out. So obviously I'll need to bring back the white balance for some of these ones. They're quite orange, but in terms of the actual shot themselves, really happy with how these came out. So we just finished editing that set of images and yeah, I'm super happy with how those rollers came out, especially they look really, really nice and you know, quite a low contrast, soft, summery look and if you might have seen, I put a lot of um, purple and orange into the images, just made it look really warm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll put some of the finished photos up on the screen now. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to see more editing videos, leave a comment below and remember to subscribe and I'll see you next time.